So thank you for inviting me to, to have this speech. And I'm Valentina Grasso and I'm a um, researcher at the Italian National Research Council. And I work in Florence and I'm a science communication scientist. So I'm social science background and working on communication as a researcher and also as a fractionist. And in the last two years I've been working at Consorzio Lamma that is a, a consortium between the National Research Council and the Tuscany region, it is like the county level. So it's more like an operational centre, a research and operational centre, and we mainly deal with environmental monitoring and modelling, so researcher. But also it hosts the regional weather service. So we, we have you know, regional weather forecasts and we, we are in charge of alert and warning for severe weather events. So I started working with my colleague with forecasters on communicating uh, weather issues and uh, also uh, we, are, we are also started um, uh, using social media uh, as institutional channels on Facebook and on Twitter, mainly about weather that is more interesting things for people. So this morning I, I will give you a more, maybe less practical angle, but more a case study we've done with my colleagues. That is, I mean, we wanted to find, uh, you know, some connection about a uh, um, severe weather event and we took uh, a heat wave as a case study and see how uh, the, you know, you can find a footprint of the event on the social sphere looking at social media. And uh, we also did some semantic analysis to try to understand the, the Twitter stream and the data that we had. So, of course, I mean, on social media, there is a lot of content and conversation going on. So people share, you know, information, as everybody in this room knows, and also collaborating each other with each other. And also this is mainly um, also true during emergency or, you know, or emergency condition where they can try to find information on social media and also reference point. So the reference source of information to understand what is going on. And um, also because there is a lot of conversation and interaction between people, they, on social media you have a sort of big lens on what is going on in society. And uh, so it's kind of, uh, you know, I would say uh, laboratory, you know, like in so social science you have surveys, you have focus group to try to understand what is people's perception about anything, I mean about a brand or about a product and also about, uh, you know, um, events, you know, emergency or, you know, severe weather events. So it gives you some insight on how is the people perception and uh, emotions and feelings of in this in that moment. So it gives you a lot of data about um, what is going on. So it's not that easy to extract that data and the useful one to have the pictures of the event, for example. So what can we use and how can we use it? And weather is a, I mean, is a very common conversation topic and everybody wants to be aware of uh, weather condition and the weather app uh, are one of the most downloaded app from the App Store. In the 2012, uh, the Weather Channel app was the, the fifth most downloaded app, I mean, of all the App Store. So it's something that people want to be informed on. And uh, it's also a conversation topic. I mean, people, you know, exchange opinion about weather if the forecasters are right or wrong. And also, um, there is also some, you know, a social network emerging on mm -hmm. weather exchange. For example, this Metweet that I'm mentioning is um, a service where people can uh, make, uh, um, tag the weather in their place mm -hmm. and they do directly on a map. So you can say, you know, here is a sunny or it's cold or it's raining and you can share with this information on, uh, on the Metweet uh, uh, application and website and also you can share it on, tw on your Twitter profile or your Facebook page. So it's um, actually it covers, I mean it's worldwide, it's two Italian guys uh, um, who made it but, and it's free of course. And also for example during uh, um, 
risky conditions, so you can uh, allow the application to give you notification. So actually, if you know, you know that maybe in the surroundings, you know, there is a storm that is approaching. Also, it also um, um, can help, you know, in the uh, on-site monitoring of the event, for example. But whether, um, so it's just, just a conversation topic, is also a special case of emergency, could be in terms of severe weather. And uh, um, weather-related emergency has some kind of, you know, mm, characteristics respect to other kind of emergency. Uh, they are, I mean, more frequent respect to other ones, so it happens more frequently respect to other more, you know, more severe, more, you know, um, a kind of emergency. There's something mm. that people are more familiar, familiar with, because we said that weather is something that is a conversation topic, so people check weather information. So they're also more used about uh, and more familiar with the language, you know, with the vocabulary used. Also, maybe they already have the, you know, um, favorite source, reliable source of information about weather forecast. So during uh, you know, an emergency, they already know where to, to find the right information. And they have a lot of, mm, you know, a lot of follower of people trusting to the, to the services. And also they are predi more predictable than other kind of emergency. I mean, uh, if you have good forecaster, you, you can know with a certain degree of certainty that a severe weather is approaching. So this make um, severe um, weather related emergency a kind of, you know, um, a special case where you can work in, in preparedness better than in other kind of emergency. Because you, you know, I mean, when it is going to happen, maybe where it is going to happen, so which kind of community would be involved possibly by the impact of the, of the weather. So um, it's kind of, uh, it seems to me kind of a, you know, as a context, an operational context where you can really work on building more resilient community trying to be more, you know, make people more aware of the risk, um, aware of the, you know, of the, um, of the impact of those risks on the, on the population and so to be more prepared and act more reasonably. Because actually many emergency, of course, it's not only but also people behavior that make the event an emergency. If people, I mean, know where to go or where not to go, you know, the impact of the, of the event is uh, um, I mean weaker than in other cases. And with, uh, with weather, we can, we, you can work on it and also work on communication about it. So, the, 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 in, in the US, for example, this tornado warning system, you know, is going on from years to years, so people respect to Europe are much more trained about, you know, facing uh, you know a severe, very strong severe weather events and uh, but in Europe uh, in the last uh, 15 years maybe with the changing climate the occurrence of severe weather events is increasing actually and so many events that we you know say that we target as a uh, target we tag as uh, exceptional event are no more such exceptional as before so the number of, of, of extreme events is increasing. And so also our, I mean, communication have to, to become more aware of this changing. So with the changing climate, we need to change awareness and preparedness of people about the, the, the occurrence of this event. That's why, I mean, also we wanted to better understand as forecaster the impact and the perception in the, in the population, I mean, of the of the severe weather event, this was just this is just a case study. So we made it on the heat wave that I mean uh, occurred in April 2011. It was not just in Italy actually, but in the south of Europe. It was I mean a very hot uh, week uh, in the beginning of April, so with temperature above the mean of 10, 15 degrees. 
And the, the, the research objective for us was to investigate the extension you know, of the physical event, so the extension of the heat wave, you know, which areas were more impacted by the, the heat waves, and if there is any connection about the, e the social footprint of this event on, I mean, we, t we took Twitter for social media. And um, we developed some tools and methodology to do that. And uh, um, we did some semantic analysis about to, to make analysis of the tweet stream and to trying to find, you know, people perception and uh, uh, du during the event. So th we thought the heat wave, I mean, was a good case because, I mean, it was not such, you know, um, um, strong emergency in terms of impact. I mean, it was just very hot. You had also, of course, you know, people having trouble in that days because of the, uh, the, the rapid change in temperature. So, you know, have like 15 degrees more respect to two days before. But it was not that striking. And also because in emergency, actually, is very much, the impact is very much a consequence of behavior. If you, I mean, if you drink, if you do not go out during peak hours of the day, and uh, you know, if you take your kids, an elderly person at home during the, 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 the most you know, um, hot, hot hours of the day, I mean, you know, I mean, everything is fine. So if you know how to act, uh, you, you, it's not going to hit you that much. I mean, so, uh, so the heat wave, I mean, it's, it's a period with a persistent temperature above the seasonal mean. And of course it changed, I mean, the definition changes depending on the, the, the place where you are. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a climatic also uh, driven. And uh, the, um, what, which product we developed? We developed a methodology to make this association, as I was saying, between the uh, weather data, so the temperature um, registered uh, during that days, and trying to find the connection about uh, uh, the, the, the social impact on Twitter. So we had a metric to evaluate the Twitter stream. Then we did uh, you know, a, an association between the Twitter stream and the map, the weather map. And then we found a correlation about the two dimension and uh, produced an associative map that will be clear when I show you now. And some semantic analysis of Twitter stream about work clouds, number of tweet per days and clustering. And uh, um, we wanted, as I said, to detect areas where the impact of the event was perceived more strongly than in other area. Um, we use this data, um, the, 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 we, we use the research with a Twitter API search, uh, searching for word containing some key terms. They were caldo, afa, etc. that is like caldo is hot, afa is like, you know, sultriness, and seta is thirsty. So we search for Twitter in Italian language, you know, uh, during, uh, um, from the 7th to the 13th of April. Um, so Twitter containing that keywords. And we um, collected uh, more than 6,000 Twitter for that days. Then on the, in the weather, on the weather side, we used the urban daily maximum temperature and the, um, the gridded map <coughs> of the our IRV model, atmospheric model, that is the maximal daily temperature. So the forecast for each day, you know, that the model <coughs> um, deliver, you know, for the same day. That is a grid map, meaning that, uh, you know, the map, <coughs> on the map you have the gri a grid with where each pixel, each box uh, is a nine per nine kilometer um, square, you know. So for each square you have uh, data on that. So all the Italian territory was greeted on this map. Um, starting with the Twitter metric, so we um, counted, you know, the daily number of tweets containing those three keywords. I mean, at least one of those keywords. So and do you have a pointer or no? no okay. So <laughs> I'll do that. 
Um, so as you can see on the, on, the, on the first graph on the left, you will see the distribution of the daily number of Twitter containing the keywords and uh, just these uh, um, dimensions of, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so you, you can see the, the red columns identify actually perfectly the three days of the heat wave, meaning that the volume of Twitter shared about uh, you know, that event actually fits with the uh, temperature trends. And on this other graph, in fact, you have the, 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 the Twitter and the red line, the, the, the lowest one we can see has a similar trend is um, the national mean temperature during that days. So there is a, a you know a, um, a similar trend in both. While the highest one, this one, is the highest temperature. The, sorry, the the mean temperature in the north of Italy. In fact, the north was a more heated part of the the country uh, by by the heat waves. So it's very much uh, you know as you can see, it's very much a connection between just these two dimensions. So the number of Twitter shared and the the, the temperature, the real temperature, you know, trend of the temperature. So then what we did, um, we made an association between these uh, you know linear vectors. So the number of tweets, and we trying to find, we wanted to find an association for each pixel of the map, so in every zone of the map, for every day, so the slice, you know, every, every slice of this cake <laughs> is the, the, the gridded map, you know, or with, the, uh, with the, temperature, the daily temperature. So we made an association, a linear association, where, you know, this connection between these two dimensions, the volume of Twitter and the the, the temperature during that days and that pixels, pixel, so where there was a stronger, a weak or strong association. And, and this is the, the result that is like the asso association map. We did not consider it the, you know that with Twitter there is a problem about, about geotagging. You actually don't know where the Twitter comes from. So only a small number of Twitter have, you know, like geotagging is less than 5%. So we did, not, we did not use, you know, like Twitter geotagging. We used the volumes in number of tweets and then the weather map, who of course it is a geographic output, to find the connection, you know, to make a geography uh, footprint of the Twitter stream. So the... the, the uh, the, the impacted areas, actually, the red and the colored areas was the area where actually uh, the association between Twitter and the heat wave was more significant and actually the, where the places where the temperature was the, the I mean, highest in all the country. So, um, I said that it, it's like to, to, to have a weather map at X-rays you know, when you do, uh, sorry for the medical <laughs> comparison, but I thought it's quite, uh, you know, uh, easy maybe to explain. We use the social media stream as a contrast medium, you know, to make, to highlight from the weather map the areas where the impact was more strong. The impact in terms of people perception. You know, it's like when uh, you know, journalists making uh, media, making um, you know, reporting about the event. They you know go to talk to people. Hi, hey, how do you felt? And uh, how was? It? But then you have a small number of people answering. And then, of course, you know, when you make an interview to someone, you have a sort of you know um, uh, non-neutral answer because you are asking. While this way is like um, extracting from the social conversation of the event, uh, you know, what they, are, what they are talking about, what they think that the impact was. So it's like, you know, taking this information, how, I mean, it, how it is, not asking them, using it to highlight on the weather data the more impacted areas. Um, and we actually, um, it, it, it was reasonable to do that because if you think at the, 
kind of the shape of the weather event and the shape of the conversation, you know, or communication event, they quite share the same kind of wave shape. You know, you have a, a starting of the event, also in weather it is that way, you know, the event is approaching, so you have the first signal of the event coming, and also in conversation, of course. So you have a peak where you have the maximum impact of the event and then, you know, the, the event decline. And uh, also the communication follow this trend, you know, you have people start talking about them, then it grows, it grows, it reaches a peak and then it declines. And if you think this is possible with this kind, as I was saying, of emergency, if you have, I don't know, if you have a, a an, an, an accident, an in, I mean, a, a, an accident, a nuclear accident, or whatever. You do not have like a preparation and then a peak and then a decline. You know, it's like a, a sudden event. And of course, also in many other emergencies, you do not have this kind of uh, you know wave shape. So in weather, you have it. So that's why this. It, that's why it fits because they actually act in the same way. And. I mean, if you see on the map, these were the, the um, uh, recorded temperature. So where the temperature was, I mean, recorded the, um, yeah, for every day. And you will see that the 9 of April, as in the Twitter graph, was the day with the I mean, highest temperature. So we kind of matched. You know, there is a, a correspondence in the Twitter stream and in the weather temperature. And also, you know, these areas, uh, was the red areas on the map where the cities where the temperature was highest. So it actually, it, I mean, it, it was fitting, it is fitting. Um, then we did some semantic analysis on the Twitter stream. And we use, I mean, it was mainly, I, I'm not the, the technical uh, uh, member of the couple, but uh, um, it was my colleague, we used the RSTAT as a um, statistical um, tool to make this analysis. Uh, I mean, uh, that has a package about uh, tax mining. So we m identified, I mean, the number of Twitter um, containing that keywords, of course, during the, the, the heat days, as you will see, they are the majority of them. And then we did some, um, some um, visualization of, with word clouds of the terms with a fre frequency higher than 30, you know, repeated more than 30 times during that days. And then also uh, the, the word clouds of the hashtag and then the, some work on clustering. So that was the, the work, of course it's in Italian, so it's not that, uh, you know, immediate to you, but um, those were the heat days and during the non-heat days. So, of course, I mean, we have excluded the three key, ser key terms, of course, you do not find them. So they're not that different. The difference is that during, in this one, is more rich, so you have, you know, more word used and more vocabulary. You have swear words, you know, people, you know, <laughs> like not happy about all that, <laughs> all that hot. Mm -hmm. And also you have more um, um, geographic terms. You have name of places, you have Milan, you have Rome, you have North, you have, while in these other, uh, in the other set of words you don't. And also you have more specific word about, uh, you know, temporal, um, indicated time, you know, like morning, afternoon, uh, or for example, you have August, oh, people saying, you know, it seems to be in August, you know, you have April, that was the, the, the day. So you have a, a richer vocabulary and also, you know, more words indicating uh, um, time and space. Oh, this is not so clear, but there was a clustering uh, association um, this um, describes the, um, how the words are related to each other. So how many words um, com um, appear together in the same Twitter. So, uh, I mean, the main difference is that this is mo more poor than this one. So this one, the conversation actually is more rich. They use adjective beside the three central keywords. 
So actually, you can, um, you can see that this was the conversation topic. So people were, I mean, making tweets about the event, the, the, the hot days and the heat wave. While in this area, you know, people were you know, talking about other stuff and then mentioning, you know, uh, the, the, the hot, what is not central. So this is the same more clear. As you will see, the, you have a lot of, you know, clustering of words occurring together. Um, we also made um, a frequency ranking of the most used words, the words occurred um, many times. So, and you have that OGs today, is, you know, it's, you have an increase, but it's still in the first place. Why troppo, that is too much. You know, during the heat waves, troppo, too much was the second most used word. So, you know, and it's ki kind of doubling respect to the other, to, to the non-heat days. So the, the, the use is double. And then you have sun that goes to the third place. So also terms uh, ranking gives, uh, gives you an idea of how, this is a simple, of course, um, example, but how words are used inside the Twitter stream and what people are describing the event and what are saying about the event. This other one is the word clouds of the hashtags used. So which kind of hashtag people use it inside their tweet. So caldo, hot, of course, was the, 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 the most used one. And uh, also you see that uh, Milano, that is what, I mean, uh, becomes an hashtag, one, I mean, very used hashtag. And of, of course, um, AFA as well, this is like, as I was saying, uh, sultriness. While in the non-heat days, you see a lot of you know, other hashtags, meaning that people were talking about other, other argument, other, other topic, and then mentioning, you know, maybe that it was hot or something. And this also means that, uh, you know, choosing hashtag is quite important if you want to retrieve information and if you want people to converge on, um, you know, sharing information on social media. And, uh, um, this other one, sapevatelo, is like um, is like a, 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 tr a trend hashtag in Italy. It's like you know you should you should know that it's something that uh, people use to make information share. And the fact that it was used during that days means that in some way it was recognized by the community as a, a, I mean a, a topic event, a trend event that people want to share information about. So um, some of the results, as I was saying, we, we, we can see that during the heat critical days we had a widening of the lexical base, people using more words to describe the event, describe their feelings, describe the situation. Also, you know, in, in you also see the appearance of geographic name and reference in, um, in time and space. And this actually fits with the, all the research that say that uh, social media can increase the situational awareness during disasters because actually they you know give information about the, the when, the where and the who during the disaster helping people to build the big picture of what is going on and actually you can find that also in this small and uh, um, uh, case study. So, um, Turning to the medical <laughs> side, um, we we found that this methodology with us using uh, you know the association of Twitter volume during the event and the the, the 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 weather event in itself was a sort of you know f having an X rays of the weather of the weather heat waves, trying to really um, highlight the areas where the the, the people perceived more strongly that event and were affected by it, uh, at least in terms of uh, how they communicated. And also this could be, uh, of course, uh, it also helped a forecaster to better understand the impact of the, the weather events. And also, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, I think it, uh, um, 
it underlined that uh, working on weather uh, could be, in my, in my opinion, a good context uh, talking about emergency, where to um, you know, work on communication and try to build this more resilient and prepared community. All the code is shared on GitHub, so if any of you want to see the data set and the code that we used to do the, the, the analysis, you can just have a look and download and reproduce the analysis by, by yourself. And uh, otherwise, if you have any questions that I can answer, those are my details. Thank you. Well, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.